Sunset oh. flip power bomb into, into a bridge, into a pin. Conrad kicks out and catches him in an armbar, locks it in, and rolls him away from the ropes where he cannot. Oh. Oh, he's oh and that's out. it, folks. And he wins with the submission. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner representing Team Honey Badger, Conrad Lukes. Chase never had a chance tonight. Blake never has a chance. I will fight Blake anytime, anywhere. Come out here right now and... That's a 
pinky promise that we will see dirty, nasty asteroids on April 23rd. Get their shot at Stills and Cots. Capital Pro Wrestling fans, we've got eight more events scheduled at the Fledge for 2022, and we want you at ringside for all of them. We'll be back on April 23rd to take more episodes of the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase with a special 2 p.m. bell time. We'll be back at the Fledge for the following dates in the rest of 2022, May 14th. June 18th, July 16th, August 13th, September 17th, October 15th, and our season finale on November 19th. Tickets are $15, but we are offering a season pass for all of our 2022 events at the Fledge for only $100. Contact American Lucha Libre at gmail.com to get in on the savings, because we want to see you at ringside. Jaharis Gray coming up to the announce booth, making himself known. Sporting that kendo stick. there, Mr. One Night Only, J.P. Ono, wearing the black and red today. Jaharis Gray seems unimpressed, or at least not intimidated. See, now I understand why my grandmother always had magnetic snaps and all her finest girls. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase. We're going to start this one off hot with uh, oh. <clears throat> Jairus Gray taking on Mr. One Night Only. Did, did Jairus Gray just get a toothpick to the face? I do believe that was a toothpick to his face. Jaharis Gray wrenching that arm. But reversal by J.P. Ono. J.P. Ono definitely has the experience over uh, his opponent. You know, J.P. Ono tussling Jaris' gray hair, which is unfair because Jaris cannot return the favor later on in the match. No, there has to be a little bit of envy on the part of Mr. One Night Only. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, he got his toothpick back, it looked like. Oof. That's a terrible time to get your toothpick, and how's it getting a boot? Maybe he's trying to help him dislodge something in his teeth. Maybe. Big chop, throws him into the ropes. Huge hip toss taking over Mr. One Night Only. Side slam taking him down. Gray seems to be giving up a bit of weight to Mr. One Night Only. However, with that, with that being lighter, you've got oh. to think he gained some speed. Diving forearm strike to the back of JP. Oh no. Some great use of the ropes there by the, the Gray Wolf. Half of the Gray Wolves. The other half of the Gray Wolves is on tour with his band, Visceral Autopsy. So the one lone wolf tonight yep. facing the one night only J.P. Ono. A lot of solos and singles in that yeah. sense. Oh. J.P. Ono looking to uh, create some distance there and go against the ropes. But J.S. Gray wisely pulls him to the mat. Just cut him off. Definitely changing the momentum. Oh. A choke slam out of J.P. Ono. Yeah. A low choke slam, almost a leg sweep, but driven down hard. Because Jaharis Gray, full impact on it for certain. <laughs> the ref commenting on it there. Oh no, seems to not be letting go of that hair at all. Holding it angrily. Follow a slam out of the bad guy, I guess. Gray dazed. That could have been it. A lot of fight left in Jarris Gray, though. He is a scrappy competitor. Yeah, you uh, you see it a lot in his tag matches. He is somebody that can take a lot of damage. I do wonder if being in a in a solo matchup is going to to break his rhythm. I mean, that is certainly a skill set one hones, and while it translates for the most part, it does not translate directly. Sure, you know, it, having, having your tag partner to fall back on, too, and when spots get, time gets rough. Yeah. Mr. But, Mr. One Night Only doesn't suffer from that, as I've heard he's also kind of Mr. One Friend Only. <laughs> Oof, that was a big suplex from the wolf. Your is gray. Makes the cover, but Ono kicks out. <laughs> Jess Gray going up. Oh. Yeah. He's looking, looking for something big, but waits too long. Foolish move. Oh, there we go. Is he going for it? Oh, and got him down. Thank you. 
On the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase, it's an extra dirty, nasty episode. First, we'll see the high-speed pairing of Dirty Dylan Derringer and his opponent, the extra most bestest, Blake Bale. And in our main event, Nasty Nick Zero takes on the Black Sheep Justin Green. Will Sheepy keep on his winning ways, or will Nasty Nick bring his streak to zero? Find out next week on the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is a tag team contest scheduled for 10 minutes or one fall and is part of the Great Lakes Tag Title League. Introducing first, hailing from the open road, weighing three hogs, Ace Evans, Road Rash, the Nomad. Title League Block B matchup. I'm bigger than you, man. 
marvelous destiny and the nomads. Mac looking to get this match going. Yeah, the team of Marvelous Destiny has two points in the tag league. While the Nomads are looking to get their score their first actual victory, but they do have a tall task ahead of them tonight to take the team of Marvelous Destiny for sure, DJ. The Nomads have uh, quite a bit of experience tagging together. Mac and Destiny, I'm sorry to have it, Mac and Marvel are uh, relative newcomers to the tag team scene here at Capital Pro Wrestling. However, they have definitely found some synergy. They do have complementary styles. But right now, Ace Evans has been very successful in chipping away at Big George Mac's base. Well, again, if you take away the man's leg, he can't stand up, which completely neutralizes any size advantage he had prior to, prior to the match starting. It's kind of thing, Mac did not want this. Mac was looking to start. And Road Rash is just continuing on that leg. Yeah. Mac was looking to start with a big power grapple, and instead the Nomads have been able to ground the big man. Mac has enough strength though to stop Road Rash from able to whip him out of the corner, oh, reversing it. Might have been a bad move by Road Rash. Oh, big splash. Still a bit hobbled as the big man. Yeah, but favoring that leg. Seems to still have more than enough. Yep, smart move right there, tagging in his fresher partner, Mike Marvel. The hit. Clean elbow. Yeah, pinpoint elbow with that off the top rope. It was well delivered. Looks like it hit right where it wanted to from the shoulder of Road Rash. Looking to not just inflict damage, but to possibly disable that oh. arm. Carwell back, uh, back elbow kind of a miss. Road Rash uh, just applying those boots to the insection. A little rake the eyes. Taking full advantage of his four seconds he has. To these, these nomads are tenacious. Any opportunity they have to hurt you, they will take it. Again, remember, throughout all of this uh, tag title action, these matches are wrestled with a 10-minute time limit. So uh, not, just, not just battling their opponents, also battling the clock. Are all of the competitors. Yeah, and sometimes that clock is their biggest opponent. Certainly. With points on the line. Uh -huh. Ace Evans, in addition, in addition to having that uh, wrist isolated, seems to be playing some head games. Trying to lead a clap with the uh, open hand of Mike Marvel. You know, what they make up for the lack of wrestling moves, the moments have in, in violence. Yeah. They're, they are tremendous brawlers. Yeah, everything's deliberate and hurtful. Looks like, looks like, looks like Evans is almost taunting. Yeah. It looks like he's excited to get another shot at Mac. I mean, not sure if he wants it or just knows that it's antagonistic. And likes playing the villain. Speaking of, a oh, oh, beautiful tag team work by the Nomads as they transition off on Mike Marvel. It's absolutely brutal. Yeah. Marvel just hasn't had a chance to uh, catch his breath no. since missing that big cartwheel back handspring. Yeah, the Nomads have been on the throttle this whole time. Not giving Mike Marvel a moment. How smart is that by Road Rash holding Marvel while he makes that tag? And holding on to the rope to, just yeah. to keep them in place. Anchor him in there. It's kind of like a game fight almost. Oh. 
Evans. Stomping the fingers. Yeah, Evans is looking to take away Marvel's hands completely. Wade Rush distracting the referee while Hyper extending the hand and striking the palm. Trying to break those fingertips. Bad thing about a broken finger is they won't do anything for you at the hospital. Hmm. The ref, the ref has uh, chastised the nomads for that joint manipulation. But I am not Marvel with the elbows trying to fight out. I'm not certain if it's not too late. Drop it. Marvel. Incidental tag to Road Rash. Drop kick. Yeah, you take away Marvel's hands. He's just going to use his feet. Saddle ahead to his takeover, putting the Nomads into a dangerous position, then drop kicking Road Rash into the DDT. Marvel strung him together and then knocked him down. Marvel going to the wrong corner, though. He's got to turn it around. How much is that be him being. Uh, discombobulated and how much was it just him needing to get anywhere he could just to get away from the nomads yeah I don't know big tag to George the bigger George Mack <laughs> fuck oh, man George Mack <laughs> elbows elbows are plenty for the nomads <laughs> those clothes lines have so much force behind them Stacks up the nomads. Just dives into him. Crushing the two. I'm not certain. Uh, I'm not certain uh, who takes the worst of that. The, uh, the guy in the turnbuckle or the guy in the middle. Ace Evans running into the ring, throwing a headbutt to the ribs of George Mack to break up that pin attempt. He did. He just just drove in, noggin first, Not, and getting a headbutt for his trouble. Now it's going to do headbutts a plenty. Noggin knocker taking both the members of the Nomads. Check out just the grip strength of Mack there, grabbing the big bald head of Ace Evans. Like palming a basketball. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Tossing George Mack to the outside. Evans able to. Oh, jeez. That was a big boot. Right to the face of Mack. Axe handle delivered. I believe Mack is still the legal man in the ring. I'm actually I'm not certain which nomad still has the referee's good grace. If either of them ever do. Keha seems to be breaking out here. Nomads going. Nope. Marvel bridges out of that. Less of a kick out, more just a bridge escape. Marvel looks to have at least some amateur background. Tossing Marvel into Mac. And then Mac getting kicked in the head by his tag partner accidentally. This ref back break out of Ace Evans. This ref is making the count. Did Ace Evans just jack a jacket? They have until the count of 20 in Capital Pro Wrestling. Matt comes in, breaks the count. Things have just devolved into an ugly brawl. <laughs> I would expect no less from the Nomads, Matt. Match. Hidden. It may say wrestling on the marquee, but the Nomads don't know how to read. <laughs> We've seen jackets on top of the head. Bunch of, bunch of rabbit punches. In the ring now, I believe whether it's official or not, we're going to treat uh, Mac 
and Evans hey. as the legal man in the closing seconds of this matchup. We have the, uh, oh, we have the hourglass right here in front of us. It is tipping out. 